Um, and what, what this privacy group is, we are trying to, so Zoom is working on getting HIPAA compliant licenses, but right now they're at $200 per person for a license. So what we've done is created this group and we've mimicked the same privacy settings um, that they have in there as best we can. And they're working on a statewide agreement or buy. In the meantime, who knows how long that will take if it is even accomplished. And so um, we, uh, we're doing the best we can here. So if you've used Zoom before, it's not gonna be a whole lot different, except um, that we're requiring passwords in order to get into your meetings, just like you had to put in a password today to get into this meeting. And I'll talk more about that um, when we go. So a little bit about Zoom. Um, you have pro licenses. Most of the teachers just have a basic, which only allows them 100 people to join. With your pro license, you can have up to 300. I don't foresee that being something you'll need and an unlimited time, but um, it allows you to have um, some background privacy things that you won't see, some encryption that happens, um, and then obviously the, uh, the ability to um, password protect our meetings. And when we get to that part, I'll talk about that also. So a couple things right now, if you're only seeing one person um, and then people at the top, I'm on a computer, and so it's a little bit different if you're on an iPad, but on the top of mine, it has um, a speaker view, or I can click it, and there's like four boxes, like a Rubik's Cube, so you can play around and click on those to see you get different views. Also, if you found that, maybe give me a thumbs up if people have found that, so we don't all have to unmute. Okay, great. Right next to it are the four little arrows that either point in or point out. And that will take you out of full screen or put you in full screen. So most of the time when you start a Zoom, it automatically goes full screen. So I would like you to click that so you're not in full screen so that you can see the rest of your toolbar from your computer because we're gonna go out to an internet browser. So did people find that where that they could um, minimize their screen and come out of full screen? All right, wonderful, I love the thumbs up, thank you. So then what you want to do is we're gonna get into our settings. So we're gonna to have to go back to um, a web browser and get into Zoom US. So you might lose your picture, you're still gonna be hearing me just fine. Um, don't worry, when we come back to wanting to, to see the picture, you'll be able to do that. And I'm gonna share my screen first, because when I share my screen, it will probably put you back into full screen. So I'm gonna share my screen, and then you're gonna to wanna to minimize, like we did up in the corner, and then find your web browser, if it's Chrome or Firefox, whatever you use, and click on that. So I'm gonna share my screen. You'll learn how to share screen here in a bit. I'm guessing that puts you into full screen again. So then look for um, where you can minimize that, or if you just press escape, that works also. and then open a web browser. I should have opened a new page here, let's see. But what is she like teaching us to do? How do you use the whole thing? So you want a web browse page like this. All right, and when you're here, you're going to want to go to Zoom dot u oops dot us anyone having trouble getting to a web browser and getting to zoom just go ahead and take your mic off um, mute if you are or if you can find that chat box you can chat with katie but this is where you need to be all right so i gotta move my windows around here so i can find my controls when you're here, a couple things that you can do. Um, unfortunately, I'm already logged in. I should log out so you can see it from the beginning. Okay, so here you can join a meeting, host a meeting, or sign in. So I want you to sign in. This is what you um, created your account with here, probably on Zoom. If you were able to use Google, um, if you had that, that's how you could sign in, or it's what it's whatever, um, the email came to you from that account. Um, so mine happens to, I happen to have several, but this is how I'm gonna 
get to the one I want to show you. See, there's a question. No, it's just me. Okay, got it. Um, so when I'm sorry, Molly. So, yes. Um, is anybody else on an iPad and knows how to minimize their screen? <laughs> oh, okay. So you're on an iPad. Um, I have mine right here. Let me pull it up. Sorry. That's okay. Just go home. Just hit home and Zoom oh, yeah. will still run in the background. And then go oh, to a browser okay. on your iPad. And oh, gotcha. App. I can do Safari I app. can do that. I did if I needed to see her and okay, I got it. Yeah, you'll be able to hear yeah. me. You'll still be able to hear me. Yeah. So you're gotcha. Good. Would you repeat that, please? I'm on an iPad. This is Christina. Okay, just hit your home button, the little um, button on the side, and then it should take you back to your um, home screen where you can select your web browser. Just probably Safari, maybe the Chrome app if you've installed it. Right. And then up there, type in zoom.us, just like Molly did on her browser. Thank you, Katie. All right. If um, you have more questions, just chime in like that. That's wonderful. When you're here, I've had a lot of people asking me, how do I know if I have a pro account or a basic account, or I had a basic and I'm not sure it went to pro. Um, so I'm going to show, that's something I didn't show yesterday. So I've got a couple um, tips on that. So a couple places you can look. One is when I'm here in my, uh, under profile, it says right here, I have a licensed account. Also, if I click on my picture up here, and you maybe don't have a picture yet, but it tells me it's licensed, or it might say pro. So those are ways you, you know. If not, it'll say basic, I believe. So then you know you're in your pro account. Um, so if you're here. Molly. Yes. So how do we check it out again? Show me one more time how to see if it says pro or basic. Well, if you have logged in and you're in your yes. profile, you just write down here where it says user type. Does it say licensed? Oops, you're. Yes, it does say licensed. I've got okay. my browser window so small I had to scroll quite a ways. Okay, and then there's that's one spot to see it. And another spot is up here where I have my picture, and you guys haven't put pictures in yet. But um, if I wasn't on my profile page and I click up here, on my picture, it's gonna tell me it's a licensed account or a pro. It might say the word pro, which is the same, just depending on when it was created, um, whether okay. they went to pro or licensed. Thank you. Yep. All right, so if you're here, um, and uh, we're gonna go through a couple settings. Um, this is also recorded, it'll be posted, so if you need to come back and check them, you can. Because a couple of them, I'm going to suggest how you should set them. And then once you start using it, you might change your mind. So you can always come back in here and change them under your um, profile. So the first thing, and maybe I should make this a little bit bigger so people can see better. Um, the first thing you see is your personal meeting ID. Now, because you have a pro account, you can change this. So they give you a number. And if it doesn't say pro account yet just reiterate okay thanks katie if yours doesn't say pro or license basic if it says basic you need to send me an email and i will get you into the pro account and into that sped privacy group um don't put it in the chat um please just send me an email after this or during this because then i can follow up um and i won't it won't get lost in the shuffle so yes, thank you, Katie, very good. So if you don't have a pro account um, and you, you need one because you're uh, a resource teacher or a speech pathologist or SLP or something, then let me know. Holly, so, yes. where, where did we look again to see if we have pro? You, if you just scroll down right here where it says user type. Oh, okay. It should say licensed or pro. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, on your personal meeting ID, um, you can change this number or you can leave it whatever they set it at. I just used a, per, a phone number because that was one I could remember. It's completely up to you. But what you really want to do in here is you needed to have clicked edit over here. 
right here, click edit. And then you want to make sure this blue box is checked. You want to use your personal meeting ID for instant meetings. If you change that number, you can do that now too, or you can do it later if you decide, but you really want this blue box, che blue box checked and then push save changes. The next thing that we um, are gonna want to do, so um, you see here, it's the email that you signed in with, your user type is licensed, you have the capacity of 300, your language, um, it should be on, on standard time automatically. If it's not, it's probably because your computer was, didn't have the right time. But Molly, yes. capacity of 300. I mean, you can have 300 people in one meeting. Oh, please, no. Yeah, exactly. It has been happening, but the next thing we're going to do on this page is right here, calendar and contact integration. If you use a calendar, like Gmail or, um, or like a Google Calendar or Outlook, then mine looks a little different because I've already chosen my calendar as my Google Calendar, but you're gonna wanna click on the Google Calendar, calendar there, if that's what you use, or Outlook, or if you don't use Calendar, don't worry about it. But if you wanna sync it so that when you create a meeting, it automatically goes to your calendar, you're gonna wanna choose one of those. And then you're gonna allow Zoom to get the calendar events and allow them to sync with your contacts. So I know yours didn't quite look like this to start with. You had the options of the different calendars down here. So if you want to sync them, go ahead and choose your calendar and just accept on the or allow on the prompts that come up. I'll give you a second to, to do that. Sorry, I missed that. Would you repeat one time? Yep. So right here where it says calendar and contact integration, um, yours will look a little different because I've already integrated it to my calendar, but you can choose the calendar that you use if you want. Um, if you use Google or if you use Outlook, and I don't remember what else was there, maybe a Microsoft calendar, maybe that's Outlook. Um, and then allow it, if it asks to allow, you want to allow Zoom to access your calendar, your contacts, all of those things. Anything else, questions on that one? All right, so that's, we've set up our profile. I would suggest that you, when you have time, come back here and put a picture in. That way, um, you, if you hide your video or shut your video off, your picture shows. Um, plus, kids will know if you're working with kids or the parents that they're in the right spot because they'll see your picture. So all you have to do is upload that picture you can get that from wherever, so. All right, now we are gonna go over here on the left-hand side if you, oops, I don't wanna do that, go all the way over here. Um, I have a lot more stuff on here than you do, but you wanna come down to where it says settings. So we were in profile and we wanna go down to settings and click on settings. So on the left-hand side, you might have to scoot it over and you wanna come, we were at profile, you wanna come down to settings. <coughs> oh, Katie, question? No, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. That's okay, that's okay. So um, as we go through these, I'll kind of, some of them I'll talk about, some I won't, we won't even mess with some of them, but some do make a difference. Um, and some of it is a preference that you have. So the first two, I always say that I want them blue or turned on because when I start or when someone joins my meeting, I want their video on. Two reasons I do this is, especially with the participants, it's just one less thing you have to troubleshoot. Like I don't know where the camera is and, and so forth. So if they join with their, with their video on, it's just easier. So I make sure both of those are blue and you can do that. And there's not a okay. save button. Yes. Now I am gonna stop you. Cause a good point about getting lost between watching you and trying to change their own settings. Okay. You mentioned yesterday that 
you can just watch Molly do this, everyone, and then watch the recording later on and then go through your own settings. It might be easier than toggling back and forth all the time. That's true. It is hard to, to watch. In my head, I think like you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing, but you're trying to do two things. So great point, Katie. If you want to look at these, the recording should be up by tomorrow. I will process it during the night. It takes a little longer from home. Um, so it'll be on our webinar or our Wednesday webinar page tomorrow. And um, I'll try and blast it out in all the ways that I know how um, to do that. So you can find it. Hey, Molly. Yes. I have mine. I have two windows open, so I'm side by side. And that's working. If people really can well. figure that out, that's great. Um, you'd have to have two browser windows open. That's an option. All right, so audio type, um, the telephone computer should be clicked, just that's wonderful. Um, some of these uh, will probably be grayed out because of the privacy settings. Um, but the next one I want you to go down to is this one that says use personal meeting ID when starting an instant meeting and you want it to be blue. So you just kind of got to go down a little ways. Use personal meeting ID and you want it to be blue. And then um, the next one that I think these are set for you. And so mine, I am not in that SPED privacy group, but the next one we really want to, to uh, talk about is scroll down till you find the word chat. And so I want this blue and there's also private chat. So let me talk about these. Um, I think you want both of them blue. However, if I was a teacher with seven students joining me um, or 17, whatever I had, I would probably turn the private chat off. So what that means is if I'm the teacher and I'm having this, two of my students could be chatting each other and I wouldn't even know it. So that private chat, where you, the way you guys are gonna be using it, you're probably okay to have it on, but it might be something you wanna come back in and turn off later. But I would definitely put the chat on and I would probably prevent participants from saving a chat. Um, so you could do that and save it that way. Then they can't save, you know, especially if it's you know, um, an IEP meeting you're having or something and there was some chat going on. So you can, but, but a participant couldn't. So I would probably put that blue and then push save on yours. Um, so the next one that I would have you guys think about is playing a sound when participants join or leave. I like this and I mark it blue and then heard by host only. So then I know it gives me a little ding when someone's coming or going. Um, it could be heard by everybody, but that could be really distracting. So I would probably just be heard by host. That way I just know people are coming and going because it just says, it's like a little ding. Um, file transfer, I would make sure that's blue. That way if you had um, like a document that you wanted the person on the other side to see, you just drag it into the trash or upload it, uh, not the trash, the um, chat and then they can access it. And I think that's all until um, you come down to polling, something you might wanna use with kids. You can ask them a question, you know, did you have a good day or a bad day? And they could click on um, the polling. So I would turn polling on. And then also, when we come to screen sharing, I would turn screen sharing on and I would put all participants. And then I put host only can interrupt someone who's screen sharing. Just that's, I think that's probably the best way. Another few that you want to have on is annotation whiteboard, remote control, and nonverbal feedback. 
And we'll look at what those mean once we get back into the Zoom. So you want all those blue. Molly, one question says that they can't find the prevent chat, even though they are in the SPED privacy group. So I'm not sure is that happening to other people. My account um, isn't either, so. So maybe it's because I'm an admin, I have that. I don't know. Maybe if you don't have it, just, you want the chat on. So make sure they're blue. No, it's, oh yes. Maybe they were worried about preventing participants from saving it. Somebody feel free to jump in there if. Yeah, if you don't it. have this, then don't worry about it. No, that's where it was. It wasn't. It wasn't you don't have prevent participants? No, and I'm on the, the Fed privacy group. They probably took it out of yours already. Okay. Yep. So you're probably fine there. It's probably not an option. Yep, yep. So I had just talked about down here wanting the the annotation blue, whiteboard blue, remote control, and nonverbal feedback all blue. And one more. If we just go down to where it says breakout room, you're going to want that to be blue. And that's all that we, oh, Actually, I will tell you, you could probably turn virtual background on on blue. I'm not going to show you how to use that now. If you've got time, you can play with that. It, there'll be a video out later um, on showing you how to do that. It might be something fun you can do with kids if you're working with kids. So I would turn it on and investigate it later. Um, and I think the rest are preset. They might not look like mine, but we were, had a meeting yesterday and they're pretty much preset from there on out. And do not push the regenerate. It's saved as you went. So that's all we're going to do here. Now you're gonna try and get back into the Zoom where you can see things. Um, I will quit sharing, that'll help you to get back hopefully. Um, so if you find your app along the bottom toolbar and you just click on that Zoom, that will take you back. Um, hopefully you can back to where you can see people. Yes, got a few thumbs up. People are getting there. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how Zoom works and using Zoom. Um, it's a little bit hard to see some of the Zoom features. So I've got just some pictures I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up a picture, but you should find a toolbar either at the bottom or the top if you're on a, um, oops, I gotta share my screen first. So we're gonna do another share screen here. And then I'll find the picture I wanna show you. All right, so your toolbar should look something like this. Um, and this was that microphone that when you click it, the red line goes through it and it's muted. You unclick it and you're unmuted. These little things are called carrots. I called them arrows for a long time, but they're called a carrot. When you click on that, it gives you options. So if you're having trouble with your microphones, um, you can click on there and maybe you just need to choose your internal mic or your speaker or something. But that's sort of a troubleshooting um, device or place to go. Same with video. You can mute your video or stop video the same way you do with your mic. You just click it and then a line goes through it and it either goes to your name or once you've uploaded a picture, your picture will show. Um, it tells you how many participants are in your meeting. We have 41. Um, this is just a snapshot of the other day. So here's that polling that you turned on and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then here's where you share. So when I share my stuff, I click this green box to share. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just one second. Here was that chat button. Here is the record. You should be able to record. And there's a lot of legality in recording. So they might've even turned that off. I'm not sure if you guys um, have recording abilities. Um, and then the breakout rooms. So back now, if I push the share button, I'm gonna pull up another screen here. Let's see if it's this one. Nope, not that one. I need that one later. 
Um, nope, not that one either. Sorry, I have too many pictures in here. I can't see. Hmm. Spacebar to preview, Molly. Click oh. here, spacebar. Oh. Oh. And then they... spacebar again. Or okay. just go up and down now. Arrow up and down. So spacebar oh, to preview. Arrow. You. Okay. Arrow up and down. Oh, you are so good. There it is. Thanks, Katie. See, I'm learning all the time. All right, so if I push the share screen, this is what comes up. Um, and I can share my whole desktop. There's a whiteboard, but if you're on a computer and you just have a, um, like a trackpad, that might be difficult to use. Um, if you have, you probably want a mouse if you're using that. Um, you can connect your um, um, iPad either through AirPlay or through a cable. And if I don't get that shown, I do have a tutorial on that. And then I could pick out individual things here. So if you have email up, but you don't want people to see that, you maybe don't want to do your whole desktop. Maybe I just, what I want people to see is just in Chrome, so I would pick that. Um, it, it just depends. I would usually pick my whole email or um, whole desktop. So I share, I pick that, I click share, and then whatever I have on my, my screen, you'll be able to see. One other thing I want to show you before I get out of these pictures is this one. So along the bottom in your toolbar is when you um, have the app in it and you can save your app to your toolbar, but if you just click on the app, this is what shows up. So you don't have to go to zoom.us in your web browser all the time. Once you've been in a meeting and you have the app in the toolbar, if you um, hold on it, it will say option to leave in doc and you can leave it there so it'll always be there. Or you can go up to your spotlight up here each time and type in zoom and it'll find the app for you. This is what happens, the app comes up this green one usually says um, start a meeting, but I'm already in a meeting, so it doesn't say start a meeting. Um, I can join a meeting. If you click join, all you need to do is put in a number, like this meeting ID right there. And then in this case like this, a new window will come up and say password, and I put the password number in. If I want to schedule a meeting, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second, I would click this, it's a calendar, and then we walk through and we schedule the meeting. I never use the share screen, okay? Up here, this is home, this is where we're at. The only other place I usually use is meetings, and I click on that, and that takes me to, I'm gonna show you here. That would take me to all the meetings I have scheduled. So this was actually taken yesterday. Um, and so if I have scheduled meetings, they're gonna show up right over here and I can just click on it or I can, it's kind of like a running calendar. When I do that and schedule a meeting, it will show me my invitation here. But before I get to that, I think you need to understand how we get that generated. So, Questions, are we okay to go, Katie? It looks like it on the chat end anyway. Okay. People can speak up if you've got a question. All right, so I am going to show you how to schedule, and I went back to the browser only because you'll be able to see me here. If I was on that other little um, window I had and clicked the calendar, it would look the same way, but since I'm in Zoom, that doesn't show up when I'm doing a screen share. It's, it's really crazy, but. So I have to access it this way in order for you to see it. So I'm going to schedule a meeting. So I just name it. Um, and this was brought up yesterday. Make sure you're conscientious of what you put in the title. Don't put a student's name. If I am meeting with um, Tommy Hall, I might put TH, um, uh, I don't know, TH reading. Okay, so we're going to meet for an hour. I'm going to pick my day. I'm gonna make this for tomorrow. 
and we'll do it at two o'clock. It's gonna last one hour. If it's something that you are setting up maybe for your other special ed teachers and you're gonna do it every week at 10 o'clock or something, that would be a reoccurring meeting. Or if you have a meeting with a student that's gonna happen every week, you could make it a reoccurring meeting. But this is just a one-time deal. I'm just gonna check in with, with uh, TH and see how he's doing. So meeting ID. We had you set your personal meeting number and click that box. But when you schedule a meeting, you, I would always have it generate automatically. And hang on one second. Sorry, my mom was here making a little too much noise. Um, you need to do the generate automatically because it'll be a new number each time for privacy issues. Because what if someone knew your personal meeting ID number and wanted to just practice getting on or something and you're in the middle of another meeting? You don't want that. So I would always have it generate automatically, especially if you're having an IEP meeting or something. It could be that you use your personal meeting ID if you're just meeting up with a student, check in with them, that's up to you. Uh, they're still gonna require a password and that kind of stuff. Um, but I think you're safer off doing the generate automatically. And yours, I think it has this already checked and you can't uncheck it. Um, I'm not sure. Molly? Yes. I have a quick question. So now you said something about an IEP meeting. With this being as protected as it is in the privacy password, we can have IEP meetings through Zoom. Is it okay to put, like you talked about the split screen like you have now, can we pull up SRS and go through the IEP with the parents at yes. that time? Yes, I'm gonna say yes. If that's different, Ruth will contact you, but that's why we put you in this special group to be able to, to have the best privacy possible to do that. Okay, okay, just making sure I'm not gonna get in trouble. Yep, um, <laughs> that's, that's the plan. If that's different, um, we'll send that out, but I'm sure that that is the plan for you to be All able right. to do this. Thank you. Yep. So does someone look, does yours say require meeting password or do you have that option? Um, it's checked on mine and, and I can't it, change it. Right. That's what I hoped. That's what I hoped, Lori. Thank you. That's the um, same yeah. mine as well. Okay, good. That's, that's, that's what we want. That's we want it to be required at all times. That's just one, one more level of privacy. All right, so here are these, this host participant on and off. We, we did that earlier as a preference. Um, so I would make sure that they're on. Um, I think that's about it. Then I would save this. And since I have this link to my calendar, um, it will add it right to my calendar. It will if I'm in the app, but here we go. My enable waiting room is also checked. Do you want that blue or not? Can you change it? I don't think you can. I can. Now, oh, you can? I can. Okay, I'll talk about that, then I'll go back. Okay. Somebody can else you? asked that earlier, good. Okay, I, I'll go great. back to that in one second. So here it is in my um, calendar invite or I'm it's getting I'm getting ready to save it to my calendar two things here if I am just inviting maybe a couple people and I know their emails I could add it right here and like I could put Katie's email in and it will send her an invite um, but probably the best way or easiest way to communicate this is through um, an email from you this is going to be an email invite from in this case it will be my um, Google email, what I would do is come over here and highlight this to copy, join the Zoom meeting, the meeting ID, um, yours will have a password under it. I should have clicked that so you could see that. And then um, if you know your parents are joining a meeting possibly by phone, then you're gonna need to include one of these numbers. And don't worry about the, Ho the San Jose or the Houston. Just one of the numbers, if they're doing like they're from the mobile phone, 
and you might include one if they're doing like a landline conference call in. Um, but I wouldn't see how long this invite is. I would not put all that in there because that's going to be confusing. So you want the least possible. So I would copy that and then I would go send my email or write my email and then just paste that in there. First time you might tell people that, um, that to click on the link if they've never used Zoom before, it will ask them a few prompts to just, yes, allow the camera, allow the microphone, those kind of things. If they are joining from their iPhone or like a, a phone, any phone or an iPad, it's easiest if they download the free app first called Zoom for Cloud, and then they just join and all they would need is the meeting ID and the password. <coughs> All right, I'm not gonna save that because that'll go on our calendars and it's not a real meeting. Um, oops, don't save, don't send. All right, so we wanna go back and I'm gonna go back one more. Molly, I'm gonna add in about the, when you're sending the invite to parents and it has it's password protected and like for example, when we clicked on your invite to this Zoom right here, that password is actually embedded in the link. Um, it's just if they would go on and they would join a meeting and type in your room code, then they would need the password. But if they okay. just click on the link, it's gonna keep that password in that link for them. So they just need the one link. Okay, I'm not sure that it's embedded in theirs though. Well, it was for us to join me, your password protection. But I'm not in the SPED privacy group. Do you know what I but mean? You required a password, correct? I did. It might be different though. I don't know that. Okay. Okay. So I would put, I would okay. include it. Yep. All right. So enable the waiting room. Let me talk a little bit about that. Some of you might have had that blue and it might not be. What this does is if you, if I had put this on, when you guys come, you would have joined just like you did, and a little message would come up and say, um, uh, please wait, the host has not started, or wait for the host to um, bring you into the meeting. And then me as the host, I click on you to allow you to come in. If by chance you've got back-to-back -back meetings, that might be something you want to have on so someone doesn't join another one. Um, or if you've got students coming in, you're seeing them at different times during the day um, and using the same personal ID um, meeting room, then I would want that on so they can't come in um, when you're working with someone else. So that's a total of preference. Um, I personally never use it, but in your cases, you might. Does that answer that enable the waiting room question? Was there anything else that you had on um, that was maybe blue or something that we didn't talk about? No, all right. Doing pretty good there. Um, questions on scheduling meetings. That's kind of what we went through. It's pretty much easy on the calendar. It's just where to get that information to send to parents or to kids. Um, chat, we've got that figured out. Um, so I will go back to share one more time to show you you won't be able to see these because it's only if you're the host that you originally see these features. But, all right, here we are. On the top, my tools move to the top when I share. There is a button that says annotate. And I can come and I can write on my screen. I also, um, can give other people the ability to, if I give remote control to someone else, they can do it. Why would I want to give remote control? Well, let me show you. I have, oops, quit annotating. I have our world book. Um, so if uh, with world book, um, if, you're check, if you're logging in from home, you have to go ESU 8 WB for the login and the password is orders. It doesn't automatically lock you, log you in like at school, 
but they have these matching games. So I can play a matching game. Oh my gosh, I got that right away. Or if I'm playing with a student, up on the top in my toolbar, since I'm the host, it says remote control. And then I can pick someone to have remote control access. Um, I'm going to pick Katie Morrow. And it's going to give Katie access. She has to accept it, I think, right, Katie? Yes, but it's not popping up here. Um, it did work yesterday. Oh, we did. Um, while you're doing that, Molly, just I'll keep being patient here. Let's see if you can get it to allow me again. There we go. Click to start. So then I click. Um, some people, I got a question from somebody who tried this last night and on their Mac, um, they had to go into system preferences and change the accessibility settings to allow zoom to let them control the screen. It was just a little bit of an odd place to find where that um, system preference was. Okay. So if you have any issues, holler at us, you guys, if, if it doesn't just do it. Um, the first right. time. Can you try and now that I, I click now I can try to do a match and it is a little delayed. I mean, we can't be that instant gratification <laughs> that we're typically used to. It takes a little bit longer to click through zoom to somebody else's screen, but it does work. Yeah. Except I can't get a match. It wasn't watching where you're. Oh, your I got it. I almost. got a match automatically. Oh, you're, you're good. I see. Yeah. Seven, so <laughs> six. Uh, oh, that's a five. I can't even get my mouse now to go to take control back. Oh, there. Okay, I'll stop clicking. <laughs> that, maybe that was why. So then I it is. You have to be patient. It's it's yeah. a great feature, and it will work well if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you know, therapy right. teletherapy sessions with students. But just be patient with it. Right. Okay, so I want to show you that because we kind of found that after um, we were here yesterday. Um, one thing I also did forget to, to show you, questioning on whether you have the pro or not, we, I showed you how you log into zoom.us and you can find that. But the other place to find that, I should, oh, I could have just done that one, but. Um, If you are here, oh, and I have it cut off, but right up here is my picture, but this is just a screenshot. So I go down to my app, um, the Zoom app, and I click on it, and this is what comes up. And on my picture, if I just click my picture, once again, it'll say pro or licensed. So that's another place where you can see to make sure that you have that pro license. Um, the only other thing I have to show you, unless I missed something from yesterday, Katie, help me, is um, the breakout rooms. And I didn't, wasn't going to show it yesterday, but some people wanted to see it. Oh, and I want to show how to connect the iPad. So first, um, along the bottom, if you're the host, it a little icon that says breakout rooms. What this does is I click it and it'll put you in different rooms. I don't know that you'll use it, whether you have multiple kids doing therapy at one time, but if you happen to have a regular class with lots of kids, let me show you how this quickly works. So I'm gonna put you in nine different rooms. I'm gonna create the breakout rooms, open all the rooms, and you're gonna see you're getting pulled into different rooms. There are people are figuring it out. It'll tell you to join, and you join a room. Very good. And then as the teacher, I can join any room I want. I can just join your room and then I can leave it.
Okay. Almost everybody's back. It'll time out and you'll automatically come back. All right, you might need to mute again. That might have changed, but I don't know if that's something that you would use or not, but that is a nice um, feature on um, the, the uh, Zoom connection. So there's one more share, because I know a lot of you use your iPads with kids. Um, so what you can do is when I did that screen share, and um, it looked, I'm gonna show you here for just a second. It looked like, Nope. Katie's like, why don't you do what I showed you? <laughs> it looked like this. This iPhone iPad AirPlay. Um, if you click that and push share, you're going to get this screen right here. And this is what the directions. So you have to be on the same internet um, with your computer and your iPad. You're gonna select AirPlay. You're going to find your Zoom room and then you're gonna enable mirroring. So I'll show you how that all works. So I'm gonna stop that share, share again, choose my iPad, click share. And then on my iPad, I pull from the battery sign or the right hand corner, I just pull down. And there is a deal that says screen mirroring. That's what I click on. It says Zoom Room by Molly Ashoff. I click on that. And now you should be seeing my iPad screen. Is that correct? Yep. All right, very good. Um, then I forget I have to use the iPad controls. So once, <laughs> you're, <laughs> once you are here, a couple different things. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the Notes app and then I could write or you know do whatever I need. I find my annotation tool there, and so then it shows on the computer and it shows on your side also because I'm screen sharing. I could do any app. It's not interactive unless I do that remote, um, and it's still not going to be because I no. it's on the iPad. But at least you can, so if you had your, um, I don't know, vocab words or something on your iPad, you could go through it and see it. So then when I'm done. And Molly. Yes. Go ahead. Well, no. I don't know if this applies to this group, but Rita brought up a good point that you can do a Zoom meeting with yourself like this and basically record yourself writing on your iPad or using an app on your iPad. And then your recording could be what you share with students an instructional video in your zoom room without even needing other participants right exactly so i just pulled down from the right hand corner there and this is what come up and this zoom molly ashoff right here that was originally that screen sharing i clicked it so i'm going to click it again and it's going to say stop mirroring and now you no longer you see my eye or you see my computer screen and i completely stop sharing also so I know that was a lot of information. Um, I guess the only other thing is when you pull your chat up, if you see, you should have a little um, where you type in a deal that says file. So you can search your hard drive and pull a file in, or um, you can drag a file into that. Um, I don't even know what I have here. I'll just pull a screenshot in and so then everyone should have received that screenshot 